Welcome to the Podcast. We back we live in the basement. You know how we do on State Champions Podcast. We discuss people, politics, community, and culture. And what would this podcast be tonight, G, without us discussing sports? Tonight, we definitely yeah, discussing sports. We have newly hired. Mm. Homecoming. Just hired. Just hired today. Mm. Just, they just announced them today. The they had a big old festivity down there on Six Mile. Yeah. In Living Noise. The like spot. Oh, of course. The Callahan. spot. The 23rd head coach in UAD program history. Mm -hmm. We have that exclusive interview with Coach Mark Montgomery. For all the new viewers that's in the building checking us out, y'all probably want to know who we are. Uh -huh. I'm your co-captain, Raphael Peterson. To my left and to your right is Coach Captain George Tibor. How you doing, boy? Man, you know I'm good. It's real good. Good to feel that energy. <laughs> we ain't felt that energy like that down on six mile a minute, so it's good to feel that energy. Good to have Mark in a building. Another high school grad, 1988. Good. Feels good. Same thing. Right. Aquinas finest. Aquinas finest before A. Hey, before Garaville. A lot of people forgot. Yeah. That yeah, boy lefty. Getting done. Oh, getting the busy. Oh, no, for sure. Play that state. Oh, no doubt about it. We're we, we going to go into all of that. For sure. Yeah. But, G, we, we, what we're going to do, we're going to talk about the state, not the state championship game, but the national championship game. Mm -hmm. Both of them. The girls and the guys. Man. But great basketball. Oh, it was great basketball for sure. It was great basketball. But I think everybody time for the show. It's time to drop that intro. The champ is here. 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 Welcome back to State Champions Podcast. We live in the basement. It's going down. It's going down. So before we get to talking about the national championship game, we got the echo. So what happens is we got to talk about two legends that come out of Detroit and that passed away recently. Wow. There was a big impact in the basketball community here in Detroit, but of course they had impact across the country. One of the brothers, none other than the Persian High School G. Let's talk about that big fellow. Well, you talk about it. Uh, Wilford Walton, 1996. Uh, my first true year coaching uh, in the PSA in the state of Michigan. Uh, obviously, being at Cooley High with Coach Kelso, had a chance to play, uh, to coach against Wilford. You know, 1996, Mr. Basketball. No hey, question Mr. about it. McDonald All American. Yes, sir. Uh, when you looked at his body of work and you looked at the talent, the skill, the swagger, the light on his feet, people always say, you know, it's right hand Derek Coleman. Yeah. Yep. And, and you couldn't deny what you were looking at. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't care who you were coaching, who you were playing for. His skill, when you looked at overall, he was one of those players who you just kind of knew he's going to the NBA. Yeah. Um, you know, his, his college career started off Syracuse, ironically enough. Then end up playing out at Fresno, but unfortunately, unfortunately, got a call the other morning, uh, and not just the east side of Detroit, but the entire city of Detroit, the state of Michigan, lost great, great, unbelievable talent. And as we look at it now, you see the smile of that young man, and that's kind of what I remember. And one of the things I remember about him, as smooth as he was, graceful as he was, with that size and that kind of skill, I remember him playing and. and at times, we tell the coaches that was coaching against him, hey, man, you got to get somebody else out here, coach. He can't guard me. And, but being a competitor, being a gentle giant, being a hell of a young man, um, too soon, unfortunate, but we lost a great one. Uh, rest in power as you live, young fella. Wimp, as they call him, freeze on the east side. Uh, hate to see him go. Oh, no doubt about it. I mean, I just remember you know, hearing about the big fella. And the big fella skills that was outstanding. I was looking at some stats today. And they said he added 28 to 15 at, at Persian. You know, he was one of those guys when you saw him, he was imposing. Oh, 
or they say there's no gentle giant to get it done on the floor. That, well, was, that was about four assists for three blocks. They wow. left that out. Oh, they left that out. Uh, they didn't uh, get all the stuff in there. Uh, and so, but we had another guy in the uh, city of Detroit. And Cooley High for a minute. Yeah, he was at Cooley for a minute. Or a lot of people probably didn't realize that, but it was at Cooley. But Jarvis Bash, right, who passed away last week, yeah. succumbed to, he was diagnosed with cancer, maybe, I think they said maybe a year ago. And um, he was a great, great player, played for UNLV. Left made the final four. They was a ninth. ninth in 1987, he made the final four. Yeah, pretty nice. And Bass was one of those guys. And I, I was trying to get a guy, A. Hunt, to get him on the line to talk about him because he said he wanted to get some few words about Bass night, but we'll see when we get Hunt on the line really, really quick. What up, Doe? What up, Doe? A. Hunt, you live on the air, man. We just talking about JB, man. I wanted you to get some kind words and some things that you remember about JB out there at UNLV, y'all was out there playing once you arrived on the city. Oh, man, shit. I remember that shit like it was yesterday, man. You know what I'm saying? Him mm -hmm. being from Detroit and moving to L.A., you know, I wanted to go to Vegas because of Jarvis last night and Freddie Banks. Yes, sir. Freddie Banks was shooting that motherfucker, and Jarvis was from the East. As oh. soon as I stepped on campus, hey, they showed me much love. He embraced me like I was his little brother, which I was. You know what I'm saying? Even though he went to Cooley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure, but you know how that go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I still, hey, I, I, I fuck with Cooley. You know what I'm saying? Yes, so sir. That's how I did. You know what I'm saying? So, See, if you say beat him, join him. No question <laughs> about it. So, hot. it's funny that we're talking about that because the last time I saw him was that when we was out there for your uh, retirement ceremony. That was the last time I saw JB, but then I have up yeah. on the screen. Remember when it was a year ago when they announced that they was going to put you in the Hall of Fame, and we out there on the patio and you, you and LV, we and driver, so you got to check out that pitch. Remember, you got on the suit, you got on, you got on powder blue shoes. I go, oh, yeah, you got, you got on powder blue shoes and everything. I thought you thought it was Elvis or something. And JB, <laughs> so. Hey, hey, bro. Hey, I'm going to tell everybody this on air. I came through the Cosmopolitan. You gave me a handshake. I went straight to the practice show and got them shoes, nigga. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, you know how we do it. Hey, he was like, hey, hon, come through, man. I got something for you. Yes, sir. Real, you know, real talk. That's what you said. Come through. Yes, sir. And no um, doubt I came through. Yep, no you doubt You know what I mean? So can yeah, you. But JB, man, I want to tell you, JB, man, he was like, man, when I first met him, he had a, he had a new port. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, damn. I said, man, how are you jumping that high and running like that and you smoking new court? He was like, man, I'm from Detroit. And I was like, oh, man, I'm in the right place. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't have went no other place in the country. Forget North Carolina, Kentucky, Yukon, Indiana, all them college, man, I wouldn't have went nowhere else in the motherfucking country but messing with Coast Park. No, man. So, so, hey, Han, real quick, what, when is the, when is the celebration for Jarvis? Isn't it this Friday? Yeah, it's Friday, man. I've, you know, I've been out here for three weeks. I was supposed to leave two weeks ago, but, you know what I'm saying? I said, I got to out here for my man. Oh, for sure. I know that. You told me that on the phone. But we're going to, when yeah. you get back in town, we're going to sit down. We're going to talk about y'all new documentary that you guys haven't come out. Um, so make sure we, we, we're going to stand up and make sure that we get you get down in the basement. But, before you come back, don't come back to Detroit without my jersey, man. Don't come back. Oh, without okay. Yeah, my man just got back from Florida, so I say, man, you get some rest, and I'm gonna come holler at you and take the inventory out tomorrow. Okay. So yeah, I got you. I got you, man. All right, hey, hon, man. We, we appreciate What's up, you. What's up, everybody? Oh, uh, state championship. Uh, what you call that, bro? <laughs> the state champion podcast, state man. Champion podcast, come on, man. Hey, hon, oh, man. Okay. okay. Championship. No, no, state out. No doubt. Yeah. I got to respect that because y'all beat us. Ain't no doubt about it. Listen, of course we beat y'all. That's how, that's how we got it all going. So, hey, man. No doubt. No doubt. That's what's up, man. We appreciate you calling into the show, man. We'll get back with you. No doubt. All love. This all way, love. Baby. Boy, be careful. Peace. Yeah. Vegas to Detroit. Detroit to Vegas. Yeah. Yes, sir.
So man, obviously that was Big Hunt. Man, he obviously that was exclusive right there. Right there. Now, that was exclusive. Right sure, that's about exclusive. Yeah, that's <laughs> exclusive. <laughs> that's exclusive. He probably was that's right cool. down there. You know anything about Hunt? Yeah, that was classic Big Hunt. Yeah, classic. No two ways about it. So yeah. it ain't we 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 can't uh, we can't block those. We yeah, can't yeah, beep yeah. it out when they live. You he, can't do that. Hunt said three words we said on the show in four years. Man. You know, <laughs> hey man, that is, that's my man. Hey, yeah. hey, but you know, Hunt, that's Hunt, man. He, he's oh, always been that yeah. way. And I know he enjoying man. himself out there in Vegas right now, having a great time. So let's keep it going, G. Let's talk about the national championships. It's in NCAA. 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 In the celebration. Let's talk about the girls first. G, I don't know if a lot of viewers know, but the women's NCAA championship, mm -hmm. South Carolina and Iowa. Absolutely. The most viewed game over the men's this year, they had roughly 15 million viewers. What do you think about that? And how, when you saw that game, what did you think about the game? The game itself, tremendous game. I'm sitting there watching the game now. And as you're looking at it from the start, Iowa is shooting skin off this basketball. Yes, sir. They go up double digits and you're saying to yourself, I mean, if they continue this, no way. I mean, this will be building up Georgetown all over again. But again, Dawn Staley, what can you, what more can you say about it? Uh, she maintained her composure and her young, those young ladies, you could tell from the outset, were determined to win. And they didn't, they didn't, they took those blows from Iowa. They kept coming. And defensively, though, they did a miraculous job, Caitlin Clark. Oh, for sure. They didn't do anything gimmicky. No, no, no. This is basketball one on one. Great basketball one on one. They maintain the health principles. Uh, and, you know, when you look at the interior, South Carolina got every rebound. Yeah, no, they got a horse. You know, so you looked at it, Ralph, and you talked about the main thing that you looked at. And I loved it for women's sports because everybody was talking about it. Man, it had to be. You, know, you go to certain establishments. Uh, I had gone somewhere earlier in the week. Uh, and it's nothing but adults in there. But people were watching the ladies' game, and they were tuned in like never before. So, Caitlin Clark, like you know, Coach Staley said, one hell of a player. Yes. Uh, but South Carolina's team, yeah, that team that you saw, that program, that culture, that discipline, that structure, yeah, it was big time. Ah, oh, my goodness, it was it was fun to watch. So, I want I want to say this because we're gonna get to the boys in a second, the guys. So. You know, we st everybody don't, maybe don't, they don't know, we started a new segment, on State Champions Podcast called State Champion Commentary. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. on the State Champion Podcast Commentary, it's going to be me or you or both of us yep. doing some commentary. Sure. So, I did the first commentary. The commentary was, is NBA or college basketball better? And so, I had a guy who said that the style of basketball, I said, well, I, I thought, you know, college. And, not, and he said the style of basketball that was being played, that we played back in the 80s when we were winning, yep. said it wouldn't translate into today's game. Well, mm, I said, I don't know about that. But in, in, that, in that commentary, you got to go check it out. We got it going. But when you think about it, what I addressed was three, four things. And this is from Coach Monty, who's in the building. We'll bring him on the set in, in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. But when you think about it, it's only four categories that you got to worry about in basketball. Mm -hmm. Only four. Mm -hmm. Field goal percentage? Absolutely. Free throw percentage? Absolutely. But well, you, I don't know why you're saying absolutely because your team couldn't shoot free throws. So I don't know why you're saying absolutely. But that's, that's it's, it's the we second. It's shot over something. something. I, in the big games, you struggle. I'm just saying, just let me finish my stuff. I just had to get the comment out. You threw me in there, dog. Yeah, I'm just saying. I'm going to wrestle my way out. Now. Listen. I'm going to do the hunt. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then, you only go first through field goal, free throw, assist, uh -huh. and turn on. So, and that's in that state champion, that state, I keep on saying this, in the championship game with the girls. South Carolina shot 47% on the field. You know it. Iowa shot? About 38. Yep, you real close, 39. Now, South Carolina shot 52%. Iowa, 80. South Carolina only had 13 turnovers. And 
Iowa had 15 turnovers. Mm-hmm. So when you start looking at those categories, but more importantly, they shared the ball. So when we look at this, it's, and this is what I was telling somebody, and they were saying, no, the best style of basketball is like this. What we need to do is go one v one. And I just think about South Carolina and motion style offense, which leads me to the next day, the championship. But there's one thing, Ralph, that okay. you can't negate. What's that? And, and you know, you, you, you always talk about, you've been talking about these stats for years. You already know it. There's one thing that I include in that, and I think is there's a fifth. Okay. The ability to rebound the basketball. If I, can, if I force you to miss it, but I give you 33 or 35 or 50 percent of those back, to give you an opportunity to shoot it again, then it becomes a problem. You're absolutely right. The one thing that I saw, Cardoso. I'm going to tell you why I disagree with that, with that category. I'm going to tell you why. I'm, I know you are. You're going to make it sound. You, no, no, no. But I'm, gonna, but I'm, it's going to sound good. No, no, I'm, no. I'm yeah. telling you why rebounding is important, though. I'm going to tell you why. When you look at it. So you saying rebound is important? I'm gonna tell you this. That's not the most important category. I'm gonna tell you why. I didn't say the most important. But it's you put it in there, so I'm gonna tell you this. When if I'm shooting, if I'm shooting 50 percent, because everybody gets the same amount of possessions. In high school, college, and pro, obviously different in every number. We don't use college as an example. If everybody gets 50 possessions, mm-hmm. and I'm shooting 50 percent, mm-hmm. and I hold you to 39 percent. Now, this is why turnovers is very, very key. Oh, no if I turn the ball over 10 times, you turned it over 15 times. Yeah. Well, technically, you only have 45 as I have. No doubt about it. So then I say this. The rebounds that you're rebounding, you're rebounding your own misses. You know why? Because I'm shooting a high percentage. And in most cases, teams that are struggling from the field to get those offensive rebounds and it's stuff. And it's going to be hard to recover if I'm shooting a high percentage and you shooting a low percentage, and I didn't turn the ball over. Of course, we're not saying you don't, you're don't you not supposed to rebound, but I've seen games where teams have been outright rebounded by 10 rebounds. They control those four categories, and they won the game going away. But let's transfer this to UConn. So when we go to UConn, UConn for the night shot 48%. Purdue, 44%. UConn from the free throw line, 81%. Of course, Purdue only shot 73%. UConn, this is the key stat, 18 assists. Yep. Purdue, only eight assists in the game. And of course, they only turned the ball over eight times. UConn and Purdue, well, assists, they turned it over. They had nine assists, and, and UConn had a eight assists. So they won one category. Yep. But for the most part, when you look at that, it changes the whole game. And so that's one of my things I always yep. talk about. Is those four categories. Of course, you're going to rebound, but because if teams are struggling, you're going to be able to get those. So you got a good defensive team. Yeah. They're going to struggle anyway. But, gee, I just wanted to just touch on that. But in just the excitement of the girls' game, that was great to watch. Well, the tournament itself, when you yeah. look at the girls' game, and then, you know, you're talking about bass night, and you're talking about just talk to hunt. You're looking at the girls' game, you, yeah. you look at you know, I looked at Tennessee so much. You know, Rakia Jackson. Yeah. You know, she is obviously going to be a lottery pick um, in the WNBA. Yeah, but man, you, man, can you get her on the show? Though? I can get her on the show, but here's what's crazy. Thing the about. Time. Talking crazy. About, well, the girls' game is still the excitement and the fact that they play so well fundamentally. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's so much emphasis because they're not playing the ball the rim. And but now, what are they doing? Hey, they're playing fundamental basketball. And they're. they're there you go, emotion style offense. Emotion style offense. Everybody's going to touch this basketball. Yep. And so people are are wondering where's the girls' game going next year. Obviously, there'll be a spike in attendance and ratings for the WNBA. But I want you to think about this: Juju Watkins is coming, and baby, I tell you what, and they're going to be in the Big Ten, USC. On a, they're playing some wonderful basketball, and Juju is about to make a lot of people forget. A lot of people. Oh, that young lady plays basketball, baby. So it's going to be good to see, man. It's wonderful for the women's game. And I think ultimately what we all want is a little bit of equity for them, not just from an attention standpoint, but we want these, these women who are playing some wonderful basketball to get their pockets laced as well. Oh, for sure. Hey, Q, we're going we gonna to move on this time because I think everybody tired of looking at us. It's going to be time. Montgomery to come on the set in a few seconds. Q, can you put up the 
flyer for um, next week's show. Hear me out. Hear me out. So next week we got an outstanding show, and it's a must-have conversation. No two ways about it. Yep. We have none other than Detective Vieira Brown and her team from the Sex Crimes Unit because we have to stop and put it into the sexual sexual predator that's out in the That's community. what they are. You know what I mean? So in terms of that, we got to make sure um, we we look at this show. We're going to have everybody in. Have everybody in. Yeah, her whole team will be here. I'm talking about they're going to be sex crimes. It's going to be, shoot, I think she said she's going to bring cyber. And it's another division that she's talking about. But it's going to be a great show next week as well. So we want to make sure we do that. So now on to the set. None other yeah. than Mark, Coach Mark Montgomery. That's they right. call him AKA Monty. Monty in the building. He's in the building. He's live in the basement. Everybody don't get to come to the basement. Baby. No, I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate. I feel privileged. No, 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 no. We are, though. No, no, we are. are. I say, I, I no, say no, we are. No doubt about it. So, man, I'm going to say this, man. Congratulations. And we, we want to make sure that we have every, we cover everything. Because there's sure going to be a lot of people that's going to call in. Make sure if you want to call in, call in 313-458-4445. Make sure you go. If you're listening in. And you're in your car, make sure you tell a friend, call a friend and let them know. Go on to YouTube, subscribe, like the show because we have great guests on the show. Tonight's show is sponsored by What You Want to Eat Food Hall, right there on Six Mile. Listen, just east of Myers. Just east of Myers. I'm talking about we just had a good spread. We had some, we had some, what we have, man? Y'all mac had, and cheese. Y'all had wings, ribs, ribs, mac ribs, cheese, wings. They got everything in there. Everything, literally everything. And I, I think what the people must realize is, the concept itself yep. is amazing. And for it to be smack dab in the neighborhood, hey, and it's just a little bit down from Callahan Hall, oh, man. So maybe Monty and the crew will go check it out. Wonderful, hey, wonderful spot. Great job, man. Great job, really. They're doing a great job. They got different restaurants in the Wild Pit, Waterline Tacos and things. Coons, Hibachi. Hibachi alcohol. They got crazy burgers. You blend, you, you blend the perfect smoothies is in there. They say they smooth it out. When you, when you first walk in the door, you first walk in the door. joint right there. I'm going to buy a young brother by the name of Bobby Bailey, man. Make sure y'all go check him out. We're going to get Monty down there as well. So, Coach, you're in the basement. You're in the building. Just hired in. They just did all the festivities down on yeah. Six Mile. So, tell the people, what do you need from the city? Before we do that, Q. I need you to drop this video. Before you do, I want you to check yeah. out this video, Monty. Monty, check out this video. Now, Coach, now I'm going to say this, because it's, it's, it's one, of, one of my favorite guys of there was Tone Dover. His birthday was just yesterday. Happy, happy birthday to him. And you just had a birthday just passed on the first. No doubt about it. Oh, man, happy belated let, birthday. Let me speak. Let me speak. I, I, we're okay. going in the video. I'm about to tell you that the video, I wanted to know what you thought about oh, the video. Man, that, that's the tradition. That's yes, the tradition. Sir. That's what I used to go see and watch. And you see on TV, you're talking about John Wall and Terry Tyler. Dave, I ain't see David Busher. But then we got in my generation. Uh-huh. I talked to Rashad Phillips. I already got on the phone with uh, JJ today. I mean, it, it, that's the tradition. People was down there. The community was supporting it. Harry Watson. Come on, now you had. He hey, hold on. You had. No, he wasn't in the, oh, in the building. Right? He was on that video. Oh, yeah, for sure. You had yeah. A. Hunt, Southwestern Proud Prospect. Of course. Yeah. And then you talking about the history of Vital. Really, Pokey Gaines had to go uh-huh. And then you're talking about Perry Watson with the NCAA tournament. And then Ray McCullum came in there. That tradition is no other. That's winning championships. 
That's getting the community involved. The city was hype. We had PSL. Come on, Tony Tober. Yeah, uh, Tony Tober. Hey, Martin DePores. I know much no. battles with him. You know myself when I was at Aquinas. Tony Tober. I think before he blew out that knee, he was averaging like fifty. Yeah, he was averaging fifty something. You know, he was leading the state, and uh, that's just memories. That's his battles. That's his love right there, putting that together. But uh, that's the winning tradition I'm trying to bring back to. I got to correct y'all. It's now University of Detroit Mercy. That is true. Uh, I, I, they I, don't I, like I, UND. Now, they didn't correct yeah. me the first day. Yeah. Or it's just Detroit Mercy. Okay. University of Detroit Mercy. And I like y'all repping that. Uh, that gear. Yeah, yeah. We got, that's no, nice now. Yeah, we, got, we got the no gear. Doubt about we got the gear on. The tight on. We got some new gear on in the building. I, I like this, man. Uh, this looks pretty good. Yeah. So, listen. So, when you saw that tradition, when you said, you want to get back to that. What does the city, in particular, just the close knit city, what needs to be done to help you out to bring this tradition back to the city of Detroit? What's going to start with myself? I got to be in the buildings. I got to be at the high schools. I got to be at youth tournaments. I got to get down. I got to have clinics, practices open. So it starts with myself, then it's with the staff. Absolutely. Because Detroit, Mercy wasn't represented. They left out of the city. They went straight that transfer portal be going home grown and then when kids do transfer back we want them to come back to that 313 but so it's going to start with recruiting getting people down having clinics having camps and i got to be around okay i got to be at game i got to be at golf outings i got to be at community town halls you name it i got to be out shaking hands and uh kissing babies so real you just mentioned golf it's a big weekend it's the masters this weekend you play a little golf i, I watch you oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I said that. Yeah, I like how you said it. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I have clubs. Man, I ain't gonna take a, uh, you know, broke. I watch it. Because I was just thinking about that. I was looking at some early and Tiger was on there. And I just remember, I, I think it's the greatest shot in Masters history from 2005 when he hit that one and it curved. Unreal. And it was unbelievable. So I was like, man, maybe Monty going to have a golf outing and do some things for the, for the community, get people more involved. But you said you don't play, but I'm sure you can find some people to put that together. Man, we're going to have fundraising efforts. There you go. <laughs> you know, no top of that. I can yeah. stay in my hole in right now. Okay. Yeah, there you go. go. I can go. be on one tee and hit okay. J.J. and take the pictures. Okay. Or, you know, we can get a basketball. You see Steph Curry and them out there yeah. with the basketball hoops. You yeah. make a shot, you get an extra putt. But no doubt about it. Yeah. We're going to do some creative and some fun things. Go no, no, yeah, I know you got plenty. Well, Mark, I think, you know, it's good to see you. Good to see you home, so to speak, right? Uh, what do you need from us? What do you want from us? And I'm speaking now from the community lands and obviously from the high school coaches. What do you need from us? You know, I, I just need support. You know what I mean? All of a sudden that you're bringing your teams to practice so they can get to myself and my staff and they're not, uh, they don't have to wait to get to the PSL championships against the Catholic League before they're in Callahan Hall. We're going to get the thing back going on, on Friday nights hmm. or, or, or Sunday. That's Church, yeah. where we had open gym up in there. There we go. So just to support, as in, you know what? Like you say, y'all doing it right now. Y'all wearing that Detroit Mercy gear. Mm -hmm. So, so just the support saying, no, this is a good staff. You bringing guys up to camp, clinics, watching practice. Hey, get your build. You get your team in the building for a game. How go. about watch a game against? Mm -hmm. You know, I, it doesn't have to be. You know, any anybody. That's right. Non conference exhibition. Let's get you guys to games, and uh, that's going to help big time. I love it. I love it. So you, you know, hit the ground running. We know that. You know, hit the ground running. Uh, schedule's out. You, uh, you guys are on the horizon. What are we thinking as far as I know you didn't hit some of the what levels are you looking for? You and I talked about it earlier. You know, let the people know because, again, a lot of people lost me in UDM. Immediately hit the ground running. What do we expect to see? On the recruiting um, front, it's starting this Saturday. We yeah, have uh, nine, ten guys coming in from all different levels. I'm, I'm still hitting homegrown high school basketball. It is mm. still some good players out there. We got some junior college kids coming in. We got some portal kids coming in. So we're expanding. You know, I was at uh, Central Michigan for a year, Michigan State 10, NIU 10, and back to Michigan State for three. So, hey, I'm good with international good <laughs> prep schools. We're gonna be. We all want to. We want to stay in state. That's right. But then also, you got to go out there and get some yeah, food now. Yeah, now, but I love to be in the Midwest where uh, a student athlete can be three to four hours. Parents is coming to the game. There you Two go. Two hours they coming to the game. 
Now, if you get some homegrown ones, that's going to help build attendance. That's going to help build excitement. So uh, I'm, I'm lucky. If somebody got a seven footer, there's no seven footers in the city. But you know what? If you got some talented guys that want to be some dogs, and, and I know Raphael, you was talking about all that offense. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. defending and rebound is big on my point. Yes. <laughs> And then we're going to get out and run. Yeah. So that, you know, that, that, you know, you got it. For sure. You know, we ain't going to be doing that flex offense tight and all that. Oh, hold on, hold on. Oh, here you go, man. Here you go. Now, y'all won. And all that stuff. Hold on. That's so what we got to do. Five, two, threes, play it tight out, ball screen offense. Now. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. I'm like, you know, I can always adjust the flex. If you need me to come on staff, let's clear this up. If you need me, to, if you want to get a winner in there, if you want to win, whatever happened, just don't hire Joe. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> don't hire G. You know what I'm saying? But oh man, I get that flex offense is outstanding. We just move it out a little bit further and then get some trade balls in there. But we gotta have shooters. But okay. no, I, I I totally agree. But the one thing you said though, the fundamentals are important. Yep. Yep. You know what I mean? The field yep. of in the passing. Yeah. And then yeah. you know, I like the toughness, the energy, the effort. And, and I do. I got to look. Coach Ward, now come on. The shot go up. We're sending forward to the glass. Oh, we got to get somebody. If we ain't shooting straight, at least I got the opportunity. I get this up I'm, I'm just letting you know. <laughs> you know. I'm just letting you know. Yeah, and if you shoot 50, and I shoot 50, but I get 50% of my rebounds oh. back, it's going to be an interesting so, game. Then I'm going to get to the foul line. And we're going to do some nice stuff. But see, what y'all got to realize, I said, we shoot 50%. I'm holding the other team at 39, which, which means we're playing good D. No question. That's fair. That's fair. You, and so, seriously, we got to deal with those to you, man. On yeah. State Champions Podcast, we always find a way to celebrate. And we're celebrating you coming back to the city, yeah. getting the talent. So, salute to you. Salute to you, brother. Boom. I love it. So, go ahead. See, I know you got some more questions for me. I think the biggest thing, like you said, what, what can we expect when we come when we come into a UDM game? Mark Montgomery on the sideline. What can we expect out of that? The young players are thinking about, you know what, man? Coach Monty over there now. What can they expect to play like? What can they expect from your program? What can the fans, because we're coming back to Callahan's Hall. We're saying it now. Every UDM now. UDM. We are coming back to Six Mile, living north. What can we expect? Well, the first thing um, we have to expect is we're going to have some home games. That's right. For some reason, they always seem like they're on the road. Really? So, well, because the non-conference. Well, they had a they had a they had a, a nice little deal in the, in his uh, contract where you play road games, right? He's going to get a percentage. So you're already expecting ten home games from conference play. Okay. Okay, but we have to get good opponents coming to Cali. Yeah, that's important. So, so right away. When uh, one of my sales on getting the job was, we're going to balance that schedule. Now, we're going to still play some of the big dogs, okay. two or three. They ain't going to be eight. Yeah. And then we're on the road and we come up, beat up, and yeah. have no confidence. Yeah. No confidence. So you want to build some confidence. But I, I feel like the in state rival, we've already been on the phone with DJ Stevens. So you we knew that. Home. We knew that. Oh, no, that's okay. coming okay. out. Okay. Home, home and home. We know that about it. That's my best friend. There you go. Then we got Stan, Heath Ed, Eastern, I'm showing some love. Yeah. Got to have them on the schedule. Yeah. Got to. Coach Barbie at Central Michigan. Yeah. Got to have them on the schedule. They've done you already job. know we played out of the school. Twice. On down 75. Twice. I ain't even mentioning them. Dang. They don't need no love for me. <laughs> oh, right. okay. But we coming, Campy. We coming. And then, and then uh, you always have some big games. But you know what? Expect an uh, exciting style of play. Love that. You know, we want to get up and down. I do uh, – and I was just joking around that we don't share that ball. Of course. It's past cut movement, mm -hmm. like on the women's side, but good basketball is played on go. both sides where you pass and cut and play off each other. Yes. I always like to play inside out, yeah. but I got to get somebody there. You got to find a guy. Oh. Catch you you got to find a guy that want to have his back to the back. Oh. There you go. Because bigs nowadays, they kind of want to float out to that line. Yeah, they want to be there. Yeah. So, 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 but, uh, you know, we're going to play both for the man and zone. I'm mostly 90 some percent man. Oh, sure. And I have nothing against zone. We just, oh. you know, we'll spread it out and do some things. But as long as we can rebound and run, okay. I think to me, we do look at the analytics. The three ball is part of the game now. So um, I'm looking to, uh, you know, score some baskets and definitely um, play a lot more offense, but make sure we defend. Love it.
Oh man, that's great. So you talked about the recruiting process and the young and recruiting different people. I want to know because I'm thinking this. I'm thinking we, we have to get a good mix, like you said. But I believe it's a number of great guys. It's probably in the it's, it may, may be young, it may be only juniors, but getting them to understand that I can be great at you would be mercy. I don't have to go high division one major. And then you go somewhere and it doesn't work out. Then you got to come back home where you could have spent that time cultivating, getting your game better and developing the UAD Mercy brand. Like we used to have it. I used to love to go down to those games oh and seeing those teams. I just remember, I mean, I can go way back. I remember going back to your point about playing good teams. Remember Bradley came in here. I'm a Hershey Hawkins. I'm yeah. Hershey Hawkins. I was at that game. We were there. Yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah, we were there. What are you talking I mean, about? Yeah, Coach Strickland about 50 something. And a couple yeah. weeks later, we saw Dan Marley. That was the yep. first time we saw Dan Marley up close and personal yep. at Callahan. Yeah. And Molly Mann. Yeah. yeah. Put on the show. Archie, oh, no. tell us that same game. Put yeah. on the show. So 49 that night. Come on. Yeah, 49. Yep. So to my point is, we got to get those kids. We got to start convincing those parents it's going to be great basketball here. You come from a great tree. You know what you're doing. You're going to be hard-nosed, but you're going to be firm. You're going to be fair. Let's keep these kids at home because the more we keep our kids at home, the better the brand will become at UAB Mercy. So what's your thoughts behind that? Well, first of all, your circle. You know, your circle and the hype around you is Michigan, Michigan State, the Blue Bloods. Yep. Everybody can play at those schools. Oh, those I, 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 I coached 13 years at Michigan State. We get them when they're young. We start all the way when they're freshmen, sophomores. So we already know they get their commitments early. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with being in a smaller pond and being the big fish. When you talk about University of Detroit, now Mercy. Now Willie Green. Yes. Now he did go from Detroit Mercy to the league. 76. JJ, to the league. So it's a lot of guys that have made it. If you if you start talking about the NBA guys, Dane Leonard, I got a whole sheet when I was at NIU, and I showed how many guys came from NBA. The best shooter in the game. Steph right Curry. Steph Curry. He did come from Davidson. Yes, sir. He did come from Davidson. Yes, sir. And yeah. people didn't think that he was even going to make it. No doubt about it. So you get to develop your game because it still comes down to player development. So yes. what do. Absolutely. We're going to help develop the game. Absolutely. And then when you're at a smaller level, believe it or not, your confidence. Yes. You get to play through mistakes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You keep mm -hmm. building confidence. You still, no matter what school you're at, you still got to lift weights, you yeah. got to do conditioning. We, we, we're doing the same stuff. Yeah. But the confidence of getting on the floor mm -hmm. and, and, and getting a chance to score that ball and build confidence and play through some things, mm -hmm. got to do it all over again. Hey. Yeah. I got tired of passing that ball to Steve Smith. It's hard work. And that thing is. Come on. Uh, come on. Uh, <laughs> I came out of the Catalina. I did score that ball. No, yeah, you wouldn't know. And then you get kind of sometimes pigeon in the position where you're very good yes. to help the team. Yeah. Now, I was a team player. Of course. But that father went to a mid-major, and I was getting them ball shots. Okay, now. Come yeah. on. I I think, so let me ask you this. Yeah, I'm just telling so you. So let me ask you this, though. See, yeah. I, I think, well, I, I hear you with that. Ray McCullum Jr., he did yeah. go to, okay. Yeah. He was with the Sacramento Kings. Yeah. Okay. That's what oh, I'm so. saying. But well, I'm just basketball. thinking. Right. See, if you probably had a did that, you wouldn't have been under Izzo. You wouldn't be the coach at UAD, maybe right now. You're D Mercy. Right. You know, <laughs> like you, 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 you know, know. I just like the path, even though because right. you just said something that's keto. We knew you could score coming out of high school. You got put to this position to pass it to Smitty. Smitty was a cold something of a gun coming out of here. So then you understood, understood the team aspect, right? And that's what's what we're missing. And so that's why I always resort back to motion offense. That's why I like that. Now, if you got a bad something, we're going to break it off. But I just think that I'm glad that your path went the way it did, Michigan State. Yeah. Then you was there for, think about it, as an assistant for 13 years. Then went to NIU. Back and now here, I think the journey is great. I think, I don't think the plans could have been no better for the way God saw it. No doubt about it. I mean, when I came out, at the time, you know, we're all state first team. Mm -hmm. You're projected. Um, um, some offenses, you know, where you think you're going to be that key point. But I was about winning. Yeah. Like you guys are about winning. So I was going to do what it took to win yeah. and to be on the court. And I got there, you know, 13 scholarships. Nobody was transferring. Mm -hmm. Nobody was leaving. I remember my first, I would say, 
three weeks on campus, I called home. That's when we had the regular phones. Yeah. yeah. Now, I don't know. <laughs> 13 scholarships, six mm-hmm. guards, seven bigs. At the time, I was a six guard. Mm-hmm. So I didn't get into the, the last couple minutes of the first half. Yeah. Okay. So what I did was kept my nose to the ground there you go. and found a way how I can make the team better and get on the floor. There you go. I probably would have did it no other difference. There you go. Unbelievable relationships, unbelievable experiences. You, you can't take that away. Um, I was just lucky that Coach Izzo recruited me. He was the yeah. lead recruiter. Yeah. And then from there, we helped build our class. Yeah. yeah. So that's kind of how the whole Michigan State thing um, went for myself. But uh, I, I just, yeah, the guy above, too, you know, I've been blessed, know. guys. Yeah, no But uh, fundamental basketball started at, uh, with Ernie Price at Southgate Aquinas. Love yeah, that. There you go. Love there that. Go. Bakari Alexander, Detroit Southwest. Jermaine Jackson, Detroit Finney. Desmond Ferguson. Lansing. Yep. When that thing got rolling, John Long, Terry Tyler, Terry Durant, when you were Curitan, all of those guys, Tony Tobin, Willie really Green. No, no, no. Well, I was just talking about those specific teams. Okay. Gotcha. That homegrown thing, and the more I'm listening to you talk, it's real and it's beauty. I'm telling you. And it's unbelievable what, you know, people love to hear all the things that sound good. And you can get people tricked. You see what tricking has got them. You are steadfast, and I see it, and I see you on the recruiting trails. You have Michigan State. You've been dead on with going to get talent in this state. Yep. The young guys, have you started to feel some of the phone calls you're getting? Are you starting to feel the momentum already gather itself, and are you feeling good about it? No, I am feeling good about the momentum because a lot of guys left and went out of state Mm -hmm. that I really wasn't recruiting um, at Michigan State. And now all of a sudden now they say, hey, Let's check this thing out at Detroit Mercy. <laughs> and I can't, you know, how they NCAA rules and yeah. all that stuff. But we will have some fallbacks yep. coming in. And, and, and everybody get caught up in the talent, this talent, that, you know, like, like I said, it's development. Man. And, and there's something about Who wants to coach? No, no doubt about it. And putting that jersey on and you, you back at home. So we're going to have some in-state talent at Callahan Hall last year, and everybody's going to be like, oh, yeah, I remember him. He was at such and such school. I yep. remember him. Yep. Yeah, I remember him. Because it only takes one or two to get it started oh, and oh, get it rolling. Once it. you get one or two get it rolling, then it comes sexy again. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, we do have TV games. Yeah. What are you talking about? You know, we're going to have a great schedule. Yes. And we will be playing the Spartans. Might not be next year, but, but you're going to play at some point. Then we're going to have Michigan. And yeah. then we're going to have some games on the, uh, uh, you know, on that ESPN yeah. and all yeah, that other yes. stuff. So, we gonna be seen, yeah. But it's gonna be some home state guys. The guys was like, maybe well, why did he take him? And they gonna be like, and you got the swoosh, and you got the swoosh back in the program. No, 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 we got that Nike. You, you got the swoosh back. They can talk whatever they want to. There's something about that Nike. The kids, boy, they coming. It just feel different. It just feel different. It's, it's, it's a know, couple. Of time, and man. I'm gonna be out and about. You know, I'm gonna do that in yeah. events, in all programs, in all programs. I'm gonna support. There you go. Somebody, Anthony Patton, congratulations to Coach, coach Rich, being a part of the coach, coach's staff in Northern Illinois changed his life. He'll do great things at Detroit. So it's a lot of people saying, what's You're up? You're a weaver, man. You know yeah. you keep growing. Yeah. Hey, he's hey, congrats, there. Coach. Yeah, Coach. There you go. Hey, More than proud players in now Detroit Titans. He's trying to get it. 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 He's trying to get we woke up in the middle of the night. I saw he said, like, yeah, I coached six number of games at Callahan Hall. I said, God, no, what are you? But at first, when they had, you know what? He was a manager for me. See? He was a manager. Yep. And he stayed and became a GA. He did such a good job. See? Really? And then from there, now he's in, uh, as I say, you know, what part of my job is to make sure guys reach their full potential, not just athletically, academically, but socially. Yeah. Of course, he he's a young man. Yeah. And now he's a man. He's in Chicago. He's doing good things. So it was good to hear from uh, AP. You know what I'm saying? So I, when I heard something, and, and this is one thing, George told me this. Obviously, I'm not into it like I used to be. And George was telling me, he was like, rap, that recruiting is different. And he said, most coaches will ask you, well, who else is recruiting? And I worry about that. I said, George, you're lying to me. These people not asking that. Because in my mind, I heard an interview with um, Dan Hurley. And what he talked about, he said, you know, he, he don't get some top-notch guys. But 
He said it's top notch guys that he passed over because they did not fit the program and they needed to develop those guys. And you said, as I wrote this down, development. It sounds to me that you are not afraid of development whatsoever and you're yeah. dropping nuggets about being hard nosed. So if kids and coaches are listening, parents are listening, mm-hmm. they have to understand kids have to develop. Can you expand on the development aspect of it? Oh. And where did you get that part of that from in your coaching tree? Well, I had to develop as a player, but I had to trust the process. And through the process, it doesn't happen overnight. Uh-oh. You hear all the coaches just talk about it. Trust the process. You're not right. You come in as a freshman, you ain't ready for varsity basketball. Mm-hmm. But all of a sudden, by your sophomore year sometimes, and you get some time in your junior year, and you stay out of development. It, it don't just happen at practice. Yeah. You no. got to be in that gym. Yeah. You got to mm-hmm. be in that gym. You got to come in early. Mm-hmm. You got to stay after practice. You got to get in at night. So development is, is we're going to do individuals with you. But all of a sudden, when we talk about like strength and condition, yes. no one likes lift weights but then all of a sudden they like the results when oh man after they did yeah, lifting, yeah. that a shirt is off now yeah. they got the, you know a couple ladies out there now they got their guns so you got to trust the process and don't if it, cause, uh, adversity is going to hit yes. once adversity hit take it head on and be patient if you have some patience and then you're going to see your game grow but also part of it is you got to have a relationship with these young men yeah for sure. you know, here with we the go staff. Mm-hmm. But it's a two-way relationship. Mm-hmm. So, so when you have the relationship, sometimes kids ain't jumping so fast. Mm-hmm. So you got to have some patience. But but development is key. And uh, I'm, I'm just looking for y'all know I'm excited. Yeah, I'm ready yeah. to go. I can tell. You know, I am definitely ready to go. When you talk about development, money, and it's obviously the different now than what it was when we were playing, right? So now I think, and you know what you see it. NIU, you were the head coach. Um, the parents aren't necessarily, the parents aren't patient. <laughs> you know, our producer, we're going to call him Simon tonight because he's got the Simon jacket on. Yeah. You know, uh, his son's a freshman playing out of Lake Superior State, right? Okay. Bad boy, played at Deep South. And you know, those days he called, he's like, man, dad, man, I'm, as he used to play, since he was a freshman, he's balling. And his father, like, hey, man, seriously, he's told, he said, hey, don't call me talking about this. Take care of your business, you're going to get on the wood. The biggest thing that you see is oftentimes the young people will be okay with the process. The parents are. How do you deal with that at the collegiate level, though? How do you deal with that? Yes. How do you? Because ultimately, when you see the buy-in from the player, the buy-in from the player is equivalent to that of his or her parent. That's really what it is. When you see the kid not buying in, it is typically the parent on that shoulder whispering in their ear. How do y'all deal with that? How are you going to deal with that? Well, we try to have um, not just because the parents had them for 18 years. Absolutely. And, of course, everybody won that playing time right away. Mm-hmm. So they, that open communication, you know, like at Michigan State, it was like, hey, come on down. The film don't lie. Yeah. Practice does not lie. We, that, that's why I got always open practice. At Detroit mm-hmm. Mercy, come on in. Uh, it, it, administrators, parents, friends, come on in and watch. Now, when we're saying and we're calling home, or the kids calling home complaining, or the parents is complaining. Either way, it is. Well, sometimes they ain't in shape. Sometimes they want to handle the ball, but then you know we chart everything, <laughs> and then I uh, get turnovers. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So the film doesn't last. We we try to have a relationship, not just with the kid, with the parent, but with the AAU coach, with the high school coach. Because I always say I didn't get to where I was. It's a village. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure. It's the whole pack. For sure. So the parent. It's just funny that uh, I want to go back to your your question. One of my best players was NIU. I never asked who was recruiting. Mm. I liked his game. Eugene German came. He was 155 oh. skinny out of uh, out of Gary. Okay. And he wanted to leave, but he had patience. He left. He was a 2,500-point scorer. Wow. He was first team his junior and senior year over in China getting that bag. Now, he's saying. played in the European League. Mm-hmm. See what I'm saying? So, so he trusted. Our relationship, he trusted the process, got stronger, got yeah. put that time on. Just Google his name, Gino German or Eugene German. Okay. With his videos and all that stuff, you'll be like, it's a bad bro. Okay. No yeah, doubt same. about it. And, and it's so great when you're a coach. This is what's rewarding and fulfilling is when they still stay in contact with you. Oh, yeah. There you go. You know what I mean? 
Mm-hmm. And, and you had that relationship, and the guy over in China texting you, they in trouble. Horizon, you better watch out because I'm going to put that time in. The one thing I do is get time. And I don't mind the work. Mm-hmm. But but the parents got to just slow down, take a deep breath, because a lot of times with them, they feel the embarrassment that they kid just left high school and was getting 15 to 20 to 25. He was first and second team. He was the top dog. Now you go to college. You got to go all over again. Yeah, it's going to take time. So they want to feel good leaving church or in their meetings. I tell they get out. Parents, you slow down and trust the process. Wow. Go ahead, G. Well, no, you know what? I'm looking at it and I'm listening to it. But I think the greatest thing, you talked about back to the basket mix. You talked about you to play this thing inside out. How tough is that for you to find that now? Now, that's not now. G. Ward, you know, that's tough. Because, no, because if you watch, because it's crazy because you watch the NBA game, right? And nobody down right now. No. You got mm-hmm. the best player, allegedly, uh, yeah. big, no kids. No kids. Everybody playing Joel five, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Elbow post. <laughs> right, pinch I'm going to throw him at the dirt. We're going to throw him at the dirt post. And I'm like, yeah, what did that mean? Yeah, it's funny you say that because I was a head coach somewhere else. And I was like, why do you keep posting up at the uh, elbow mm-hmm. or posting up at the three-point line? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? To me, the closer you are to the basket, you know, we used to work on the, the drops. Yeah, you know, yeah, what I mean? sure. It's, it's yeah. drop step. Yeah, for sure. You know, if you can develop over your right, uh-huh. left, right, left, right, left shoulder, yeah, little jump there. Mm-hmm. But it was that drop step. You know, the Shaq days is over. It's hard to find them. But when you get one, to me, oh, I call them them junkyard dogs. Oh, them yeah. are the tough team. Oh, you no always talk about the national championship. Where was Edie at? Oh, right at, listen, right at that goal. Oh, right, 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 right at that goal. Well, what about Clayton? Yeah. Come on, man. Right, right there at that goal. Yeah, you know Cardoza. No, no. No doubt about it on the women's side. Yeah. She was a beast. Mm-hmm. So um, when you can get one that's special, yeah. we have to be looking for them. Yeah. But a lot of guys, um, especially at the level I'm at right now, they're usually the more undersized guys. Yep. Six, yeah. five, six, six. That's all right. We'll play through them. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? But everybody else right now want to pick and pop or handle it so then they can not hand it off and yeah. do something with it yes, or shoot the three. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let, 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 let the guard shoot the threes and maybe a stretch four. Yeah, stretch four. K All Marsh, right. man, what's up? Hey, K Marsh, man, up there in Bridgeport, Saginaw's finest. Say hello. That's Coach Mark. Say hello to you. There you go. Appreciate that. What up, K Marsh? Hey, real quick, I want to ask this. I want to, it's not changing gears, but I want to talk about this. The monster, the elephant, the NIL. Oh, yes. Now, <laughs> how. Will NIL, what are your thoughts on that? And how does it work? How do you bridge all of those gaps together? And now you're coming down to UDC because your NIL deal now that see at Michigan State, oh, it could have been a Yeah, you ain't got no house in NIL. Now your NIL. Look, 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 look at it. He left. Right now, he left. So we got to think we might have been, we might have get him like some NIL deal at Coney Island. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? know what you want to eat type thing yeah, yeah. but how are you going to bridge that because it's a lot going on wilson. every yeah what is it porterfield, porterfield wilson <laughs> dealership porterfield wilson but then you got to think about those things how do we handle that how are you going to handle that because it is going to be tough with that how are you going to manage those things now the the um purpose of the true name image likeness that's what i like to call it I like the concept what it was supposed to be. Initially. Yes. Initially. Now, so you can have your own camps. Uh-huh. You can do your t shirts uh-huh. You can, if you say if it's Coney Island or what's the yeah. sponsor tonight? What you want to eat? What, what you want to eat? eat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so yeah. you can come in for a meal, you tweet it and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, if you're a bad joker like Edie or some of these other guys, oh, first yeah, rounders. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, NIL, like, like in, think about it in the NBA. How many guys got Sprite commercials? Yep. The I top mean, dog. I mean, you know, you talk about Tiger Woods and the thing, he was the night sponsor. Yeah. Or, or if it was a subway or whatever. It, that's what in name, image, and like it was supposed to be. So what happened was colleges all of a sudden, they had to find a loophole. To stay down. So then the collectives come. So now the collective is you giving donations and now they're spreading the wealth throughout um, the team. So how we have to manage, I mean, uh, maneuver through it at our level 
is uh, we do have some name image and like it's a small kitty some guys that get together so we're trying to do our deals we're, we're helping out where they need if it's housing if it's extra food uh, uh, it's uh, not just like this I'm going, you know great you can go out here with a couple extra hundred dollars to go out and have a good time buy some clothes whatever it is yeah. because before name image and like this came we gave them cost of attendance so when i was in school it was no cost of attendance no, none of cost of attendance was so now i can drive home now, if I'm not as, um, and everyone was getting the same amount. Mm -hmm. So it was never a question. So all of a sudden, if uh, you're in Chicago and I'm in Detroit and I'm a little closer, you know, we still, I can get home now. Yep. Yeah. Some gas in the cars. Yeah. So the name, image, and likeness, it, it's nothing wrong with it. Nope. But it came the same time the transfer photo uh, opened up. Yeah. So you have two things uh, that hit that was new. As coaches, we don't like much changes. Yeah. Like, like for instance, high school basketball, to me, need a shot clock. Yes. It don't mean that you got to shoot uh, faster. No. But you got to shoot within. It's going to help them. 35 seconds, let's go. Right. Let's get it. It's going to help them when they get to college as in, oh, it is a shot clock. Let me look over there. Let me mm -hmm. figure it out. Yeah. It's going to help the game. I always say this. Say, well, everyone can't afford it. Well, high school football has a – you got a certain time that you got to step that wall. Right? They got to yeah. play clock. They got to play clock. clock. Yes. Right, mm -hmm. right. So, so if you look at all the sports, we're the only sport that we have different basketballs, we got different yeah. lines, and we have some states have shot clocks, some don't. No. We got to figure it. Out. I know I'm jumping around. No, 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 no. Oh, hey, you are. like this. I got to get out. I got to fundraise. You just got to make sure. You got to hope that you have donors that want to give back and, and, and help the student athletes. Okay. But the student athletes have to do their part. Because all of a sudden, when someone's giving back and you're supposed to do a thing, you got to make sure you're on point off the court. Yeah. So it helps in some ways. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But understand this: the name, image, and likeness guys; those contracts ain't concrete now. Yeah. So these, you know, these student athletes out there thinking, "I'm just gonna get paid." Yeah. Like the SEC don't mind. Yeah. Oh, they've been paying them anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This ain't nothing. So let me ask you this: I don't be real now. So because I, 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 I kind of got an analogy when you said it was. Transfer portal and the name image and like simultaneously. Yeah. Same, is this the same thing as women and them getting their, getting jobs and BBLs? Is it like the same thing? Man, like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna let you work. 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 So you know what happened? Man, hunt down there on the show. <laughs> My man, I was like, yo, hey, this is like the same thing. The views of uh, Parlay <laughs> Peaks and not those uh, state travel <laughs> podcasts oh, and G1. No, that, I was just asking. Uh, was like, oh, okay, well, man, that's going to be a show at some point anyway. But okay, I, want I, you, know. hey, BDL, I want you to look at my man. Oh, no, I'm going nice to <laughs> I'm going nice to there. Like, BDL, what is dog talking hey, about? Man, I just want to make hey. sure somebody's paying attention out there in the land, man. Hey, man you know what? <laughs> Hey, you know what happened? Nah, hey, we done, we done got an NIA deal up here, evidently. So, so check it out. I've heard young people, this is the craziest thing. Now they're already going in saying, okay, well, what up? what's going to be in my NIL? So, I, so I'm listening to the high school guys, right? And I'm saying, damn, I got to this already. I mean, you're coming in and I'm listening to this. Yeah. I'm thinking like, Dude ain't even, you don't even have college value yet. Right. And you're already going in. And because, again, social media, we talked about this before, not a parent have gotten in. They just don't hurt NIL. And the only thing they know is NIL is money. Mm -hmm. Not a parent's the same. So, hey, what we get. And right. so, are you, do you have to go in and educate, especially at this, at a mid major, do you have to educate us? Uh, parents on how this whole NIL thing works because I think some of them believe that, oh, we're just supposed to go in and get money. Right, G. Ward, it's about to trickle down to your level because in some yeah, states... Like I had an eighth grade say, but does that mean you're offering me? Right. Oh, you, you ain't got to tell me. Yeah. Right. Wow. Now, in, in, in like the state of Illinois, especially in Chicago, they already have name, image, and likeness. It's down in Atlanta. Okay. A lot of people, that's when the... Um, um, overtime, 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 overtime. So they say, "Well, we can give you in our name, image, and likeness." They said, "We can pay you." So it's gonna happen um, at the college level. 
it is age of education on it. Because once you get name, image, and likeness, now you have to pay tax. I got to pay tax. Yeah. Now, if you signed the wrong, the wrong, the wrong contract, now it could be a lifetime contract. So when you do grow up, it follows you. So certain contracts with like um, different uh, companies and, uh, and different uh, establishments, yeah, they okay. will try to trick you and it yeah, puts you in all right. All right. Deal. Yeah, right. So, so we educate them, but all right. they hear is you know we try to say um, the saying all money and good, good money. money. Hold right. on for a minute, dog. Right, right. So, so you make sure. And another thing we deal with, and it's not talked about much, is because it wasn't like this when we're in school. You know, our student athletes now can have agents. Yeah. But before you couldn't have any. Yeah. Now kids are go through my agent, and now I'm talking to an. I'm not even talking to you. I'm talking to an agent, and now the agent is saying, "This is what it's going to take. Um, or this is where we're going to start." Um, because yeah. it's back down. Unfortunately, down, guys, it's back down. When you have an agent that's a middle person, they're getting a percentage. Ain't no question about it. You know what I mean? The greatest thing I did with um, Detroit Mercy, you know what? I had an agent my first time. I said, hey, I'm talking to the AD. We're dealing with the president, and we're going to work this thing out because that's what it's going to come down to anyway. It's going to come down to that. Yeah, it's no agent involved. So nice. it's a lot a lot of stuff that's going on uh, on the college level that needs to get changed. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully it does. But, uh the parents need to get educated on it because it's, it's like you said, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be a money grab. Yeah. It should be the opportunity. And then all of a sudden, you know, kids, they want to do the name and the likeness. It's happened in college now. Yeah. Then all of a sudden you think you're free on Sunday and that again, camp going on during the season. Mm. But it's crazy. I mean, it's crazy stuff happening or you're on a podcast mm. and the podcast is, if you're in East Lansing, it might be in Detroit. It might be in another state, but they got to show it. Right. Well, so all of a sudden, if someone gives you three or four thousand dollars, all kids see is dollar signs. Where you trying to tell them to get rest, get sleep, take academics, be yeah. ready for practice. We're on the road the next day. So it's a lot of stuff. It's just one more thing that they have to balance. Yeah. And a lot of them can't balance. They can't balance that. So I want to want to go back a little bit, back to the to actually the transfer. Mm -hmm. Because I'm seeing all these kids, I'm, I'm in the portal now. I'm transferring, mm -hmm. and it's like, yo, what are you doing? It, it's it's a great situation for you. So, what are your thoughts on that transfer portal? In terms of kids, that's going to put their name in the transfer portal, and then all of a sudden, what happens when you say you're leaving and nobody wants you? It happens it, a lot. It, it happens it, a lot. Right now, it, it's not enough scholarships to handle the kids in the transfer portal. And then that's when you see some kids going down to the next level because they don't have anywhere to go. Mm, okay. We always say that transfer portal is, is tricky because we talked about it before the show where when you leave one institution and you go to the next, those credits have to transfer. Ah, okay. Gotcha. All of a sudden, it's, it's percentage per year. It's your first year, second year, third year. So those percentages go up. So if you're taking fluff classes and if you're not getting seeds or better, they're not transferring. A lot of kids, you only hear about the success of yeah. the kids in the transfer portal. Like the kid from Tennessee, the yeah. connect kid. He went from North yeah. Colorado. Yeah. From Oakland. Yeah. Yeah. To Tennessee. Yeah. Right, right. So you get a the feel good. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, now they ain't talking about the ones that didn't make it. Yeah. We're at home yeah. watching. Yeah, nobody talking about that. But it's a whole lot more than that. I always say, God, the grass ain't always greener. Yeah. Sometimes it's good to deal with the person you know. And the person you don't know, so the person you know analogy. is definitely gonna keep it real with you. I'm not saying that um, all of a sudden you can't work things out and that this and this and this and that. Yeah. Certain situations you should transfer. Yeah, but sometimes you know what? If you keep transferring, you keep transferring, you're gonna be running your whole life. Oh, and then sooner so or later, I'm I'm I'm, I'm back on. You see, diversity I, will hit. I ain't talking about the BBLs. I'm talking about so you said the yeah, grass ain't not. always green on the side. Yep. So sometimes the fellas think that I'm going to leave my lady and go get another one. And then go there and be like, this ain't what I thought. It's the same. It's a different outfit. Hey, different outfit. Outfit. Hey, 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 you ain't saying nothing. Hey. He ain't saying nothing to that now. Hey. He ain't saying a damn. 
Hey, I, 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 I ain't never left nobody. I tell you what. So I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Shit, I done got. So I got. I got I get it. It's but but you know what, you. Trevor? The older you get, the more wiser you get in different things like that. Now we're dealing with college is tricky because we're dealing with eighteen to twenty-two. Yeah, that's the thing I and, 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 and trust me. But I knew, or what I thought I knew at eighteen to twenty-two. Oh, hey, if I had to do it all over again. I'd have probably been in that gym. I'd have been lifting weights. I'd have been a lot more focused. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the money they giving out now in that league. I oh, think about it. Come on now. Think about it, man. Come on. There's just so many people. Oh, G, read that comment right there. T Dub, E Westbrook, Cooley High Girl. She said this episode is enlightening, and the parents need to understand and accept both the concept and process as well. Thank you for enlightening me. Maybe, maybe T Dub got a son or something that's in middle school or something, man, trying to get it there stuff. Well, yeah, no, it's, it, man, it's great to hear, hear, because obviously I'm not in it like that anymore. And, you know, I'm hearing these from George, but then to get you to come in and to give us some insight on the NIL, the transfer portal. Now, and obviously you would be mercy just getting all this. I just think it's great for the parent to hear it because the key for me, what I took from this whole interview so far is this development, Develop and listen, and then you said something about developing that relationship with parents and letting them see their kids in the situation. You tracking everything. So the funny thing when I was coaching, I even track practice. Oh, no, no problem. Listen, let me see what you you say you can shoot it. I'm gonna track it in practice. Yep. Because the argument is he ain't getting in the game. Well, we're tracking in practice. He ain't gonna shoot it in the game. Can't make him in practice. That ain't how it works. So to see it and to hear it, it just refreshing to me. And um, so I'm taking notes. You see, I ain't taking no notes. Are you going to well, say my you got to say my I'm going to say my app. Well, you know, parents is always <laughs> really well. Well, Johnny and Jimmy in the, you know, in the, um, in the, in the driveway, he shoot them out. Oh, he make them all the time. <laughs> he make them all the time. Wait, wait, wait. Well, well, the last time I checked on that hardwood floor, the lights is on. Uh, so I'm checking. And a dude, and a dude is checking you and talking about your mama at the same time. <laughs> That's a whole different so, ball game. Right, no doubt about it. So you guys been in the game. We know how it is. Yeah. Um, Are you feeling the practices? Well, I know, you know, obviously I don't know the budget and everything, but I know at the state where you come from, practices were filmed. You had a chance to overlook that with the players. Are you going to be filming practices as well every day and getting kids opportunities? No doubt about it. The good thing about uh, Detroit Mercy is um, the staff. We're going to have a um, – we, we get a position as player development. We have basketball operation. But we got a full-time video guy. Uh, you see what I'm saying? Right. So, so that helps. So, we try, we watch every practice. The best the best ways to get better and get developed is see what you're doing right and be wrong. But yes. the wrong can be right. So all of a sudden, you know, we talking about being straight up, straight down, keeping yeah. the ball in front, and the kids swear up and down. No, I got it in front, coach. Oh, well, sure. well, let's look at this. Or like you were just lie. saying, all of a sudden, you in practice, you turning that ball over, and I say, hey, G, you the video guy, go. T- Let's, let's, let's watch how the turnovers from practice. Yeah. And then you can show them. Yeah. Well, all of a sudden, you're talking about getting the help side. No, nah, coach, I was at help I, side. Oh. I, was, I, was, I, was, I think that's the biggest one. Right. The great thing in Michigan. Man, I was in hell. Right. Yeah. The Man, great thing stop. in Michigan State, we can stop it and go to the big screen right then and Damn. there. Damn. And that was, that sounded like that was our coach. You know what I'm saying? The great thing in Michigan State is it, it was so advanced when we had the home games. Our video guy would lead on the, the bench with uh, five minutes to go and already have the clips like the NBA guys do, and we showing them. Okay. No, we ain't getting out on the lanes. So when they know on TV, when they looking at you on ESPN and you're talking to dudes, you had a nice little white. You like the white zip. Like, <laughs> like, like, hey, he like the white zip. He yeah. like that core. He like that core to zip, boy. Hey, so now you over there talking to my man. You ain't just over there lollygagging around. No, that's real talk. You showing right? him in real time. No doubt. Hey, dog, you just got subbed out. Because you didn't box out, you didn't help the helper right then and there. Right. At halftime, because it's real. We have that. Mm-hmm. We would show probably 15 clips, good, bad, or indifferent. Mm-hmm. So if we have a half and we're bad, mm-hmm. you know, if it's turnovers, like you guys said, if 10 turnovers, mm-hmm. the half might just be on turnovers yeah. or missed assignments. Mm-hmm. So hey, good, hey, good, hey, good, you're too nice with the rock. No doubt about it. Now yeah. we rolling. Yeah. Coach be like, ER, we get on the clips. We got to go out there and now we got to maintain it. Yep. So you do want to build up your ego and your confidence and different things like that. But when you can show it and we get that thing turned around, 
yeah. other choice choice words have been said, but the video don't lie. Yeah. So, Tank don't lie. Video don't lie. We bring, we Dane bring that to Detroit, Mark. Okay. Hey, Dane, Pitt, about- Dane Pitts on that. Dane Pitts said, Mark, what up, though? Congratulations, my brother. Okay. Dane Pitts. So, yeah, Mark, that. I got a question for you. Another question. In terms of young guy, because you've been doing this for a long time, Pitts, high school guys, and I'm talking about coaches, how, what does it take to get to the next level as a coach in Division One or Division Two, whatever it is that you in Division One? What does it take to get there? It does take a look. Okay. I'm not going to sit here and tell you guys that, um, you know, it takes relationships. You have to always be networking. You got to be at camps. You got to be at clinics. Okay. You have to, uh, I always show up at college practices when I can, mm. if I'm a high school coach. Mm. You know, and, and then you got to, the assistants that's on the benches, get relationships with them because more they're not likely, your enemy. Wait, wait, no. And mm-hmm. more likely, we the ones that get jobs. Yeah. Like when I yeah. first took my job at NIU and, and coming through it, I said, I'm going to take a high school guy with me. Okay. And I had a relationship. It's tough just to pick one, but I had a relationship with Lou Dawkins because I recruited Saginaw High. Mm-hmm. Hard. Big time. You know what I mean? And then um, not because we got Draymond Green. We missed out on Jeff Sutherland. We just I missed out on West. It doesn't it, it's the relationships you establish. Relationships, people. So, so it, it matters. I will get with them assistance, and and you don't have to start at D one. You can work your way up. Yeah. You don't yeah. matter if it's AC. Yeah. Um. When I was at NIU, one of my guy, uh, Brandon Watkins, he had played at um. He was a Chicago guy. Played at Penn State, and he was a high school coach. And I went in and watched practice. He was at St. Joe's. Okay. Um, where uh, Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah. 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 y'all know St. Joe. Mm-hmm. So, so I'm watching him go through drills and have energy and all. Mm-hmm. I'm like, man, he good. And then I got a chance to talk to him. He became a GA. Mm-hmm. Did that for two years, and then when the position opened up, mm-hmm. you think I hired? You hired him, no doubt about it. That's mm-hmm. the loyalty part. There you go. So okay. you got a chance to move up. Mm-hmm. So you you got to it's, it's all about relationships, guys. Absolutely, that's all. So I got another thing because I want to know about this obviously off the court. So what basketball is going to take care of itself. Yep. But in terms of programs for the young guys coming into college, those 18-year-olds, 19-year-olds to transfer, so what will you guys have in place to help them? Because now it has to be some financial literacy. If some NIL deals come on the, on the floor, just different things. What do you guys have in place? It's off the court for them. Things away from basketball that will help them out to make that transition. Just keep them from making that one state. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Get them get them up. And at most universities, they have a staff program, student athlete assistant services. You see what okay. I'm saying? Yeah. So it's not that. just the um, tutoring part, you know, community service, um, tutors, mentorships, internships, okay. and they sponsor all these and people coming in. The best thing you can do, I remember, I, I remember to this day, it's myself, when I was a freshman at Michigan State, myself, Mastinga, Parrish Hickman. Mm-hmm. He hit. Like, he hit. Yeah. And there was one other. I, John Zulo. Right. 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 So right. we all together, we walk in, we, big, we think we're big dogs on campus. All the freshmen have to be there. We're sitting in a big classroom. It's probably like at Michigan State, it's probably about 300 plus athletes. Wow. And you have the, you listen to guest speakers. You know, you, if they're at camps, you right. still don't hear them at camps because you already figure you're the top dog or whatever. But the camp speaker said, guys, I mean, the, uh, the, the, the speaker said this. He said, if you look to your left and you look to your right, somebody's not going to make it. I'm Dang just throwing it out there. So I look back. He said, they won't be here in four years. Everyone's not, will not be graduating mm. from Michigan State. Now all of us are sitting together. And we all came in. G Ward, you know, exactly. we had a tight yeah. We had a oh, you have a name group. class. No, ain't no question. Now I don't want to throw names. No, you ain't got to. I ain't got to throw names. No. So left and right, right made it, left didn't make it. Yeah. Because a lot when you're on a college campus, it's a lot going on. It's a lot of distractions. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? In that room now, you got 80 some football guys. Um, a lot. Hey. More than one or two didn't make it. Two yeah. Then you got hockey. Yeah. Then you got soccer. Then you got. Baseball. Baseball. Oh, so, yeah. so, so, like, like when you're in the moment, you're like, yeah, I know I'm making it. 
we always say you gotta earn them 120 credits. Wow. In college, you gotta earn them credits. Yes, sir. And then you gotta stay away from the distractions. Mm -hmm. You was talking about the what the BB what the what? BBS. <laughs> <Right. laughs> them distractions that see I know you know what I was talking about. Man. You talked more shit than introduced the BBS. Nah, no, no, we get some about real life. One last thing yep. for me as we close out. Yeah. Kevin Marshall asked a great question uh, from up in Bridgeport, Saginaw area. Let the people know what you look for in a high school player. I don't know what you look for in a high school player. No, I appreciate that question. Um, and you guys said earlier on the show, it's got to be a fit. Yeah. You, you know I me, mean? I'm a high energy guy. Um, like yep. you said, I'm going to be fair, but I'm going to be firm. Yeah. You know, I like to start on that defensive end. And I do like offense. Yeah. You know, I, I just want a complete player that uh, you still have to score that ball. Sure. You know, the college level. You just can't be a defender. Yeah. You know, so you have to play both ends. I like a, a two-way player that's going to play both ends, but I like a guy, especially on offense, he can shoot the three, he can drive it, and he has the mid-range. The mid-range game is still – a good part oh, of college basketball. Oh, oh. Everyone's trying to just say it's going to be the layup in the three. You, you no. know Tyson Walker protect that thing. No doubt about it. So that, that one pull up. That, yeah, so, 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 you know, I just like a guy to play unselfish, play hard, and, and put 100% 100 on the floor every single day. I want guys to do the right thing when they're off the floor. That's it. You know, I, I do not have a lot of rules, but if you go by to do the right things and then treat people how you want to be treated, kind of like how we grew up. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's, I don't think that's asking much. No, no it's, it's not. And then you got to give back. You got to be, you know, we have to go to the elementary, the middle schools. We got to, we got to show them. We got to do camps. We got to do clinics. We got to go over there and read. We got to, we got to stretch out and do stuff yeah. like that. Love so it. giving back to the community is big, guys. Yeah, Love man, it. I'm telling you, man, it's, this was a great show. And I just remember watching the game this year, Michigan State. I forgot who you guys were playing, but you were, I was trying to figure out. But who 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 was the, the most aggressive? Was it you or or, 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 or Man, one game I seen you, you was like this. You got to, you were short and like, man, what the shit was like? You was pissed. But well, I was I was his scout. <laughs> See, I said so. Uh, that was G Warden, though. You know, that, that was right. That was Mark Scout. Yeah. You know, I, I've been to Michigan State's practices. Okay, and I think the great thing about it is, as Monty said, he gets after it as he did as a player, right? Fair as ever. Not belligerent, any of that. But damn it, if we don't go all over this thing three times. Yeah, we all got some fire in us. The third quarter, we ain't going to like it. We are very competitive. But, but, yeah. but the one thing about Coach Izzo, uh, when you're on staff, he lets you coach and he lets you be you. Okay. And um, a lot of times I call it offense, yeah. but uh, I take a heart in that defense too. But if we don't go over that scout and we're going to show you clips and we're going to have that unbelievable preparation, I mean, it's okay to make a mistake. We can't keep making the same mistakes uh, because no matter what you want, don't every possession matters. Listen, it is crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy, Monty, as we get out of here. It's funny because I tell people now, they be like, man, Coach, man, sometimes you probably too hard on your guy. I said, well, hold on. One, I can guarantee you, and Rav knows this, man, my nephew, Jordan Peterson, come to our workouts and practice our film sessions. And during the game, I can guarantee you, there's nothing that happens on the court that we haven't gone over. I'm, I'm talking about every facet of it. So when you mess up a couple of times, and then I'll tell them, I say, wait a minute, you said you want to play in college. And I tell them, I don't care what level you go to. It's what you talked about earlier. I don't care if you go JUCO, D3, whatever. Your college coach is going to hold you to a standard. That's right. From your effort, your emotions, and your mentality. And they're going to get on you harder than me. So as I'm watching, I'm watching guys, I'm thinking, they said, man, you too hard. I'm thinking, listen, man, you got to watch a college game. Damn, are you for real? I'm nice to her. And I know these guys. I, I don't hate at their dinner table sometimes. It ain't going to be the same thing at the college level. So the time that you put in with these guys, I, I mentioned Tyson Walker for a reason, the development that yeah. I know personally that you put in on this game, right? Watching him come from Northeastern, wasn't it? Yep. yep. Watching him come from Northeastern. And watching him become a big time scorer in the Big Ten, and he's not six foot two, not six foot one, or nothing. To be able to do his thing and get to that mid range like he did, kudos to you. We happy you had the career, man. We're glad to see you. Today. I appreciate that. I really do. You see who our sponsor is? It's bigger, it's bigger than athletic. athletic. Yeah. Opportunity to change the world. We got to get you connection with those people. 
They doing some great things. Still. I can't see that last. Yeah, in my readers, but I see. I saw that bigger than athletics. Yeah. Impact the world, an opportunity. So, hey, we're gonna put that together. But listen, yeah. man, Coach Monty, yeah, Mark Montgomery, Mark. Montgomery, Monty's in the back, back class '88, and Dream Team '88. He was already mentioning the class no more. I'm trying to be young. Man, I ain't no sister. Hey, guess what? We had like '88 was a good year. Y'all know that now. That, so we was on the Dream Team together then. No doubt about it. Oh, damn. Oh, Detroit. Go look at that thing. Oh. We was on the Dream. Dream. Yeah. Yeah. We said that. You was I, on. Hey, you. You were talking about just tell you. It was almost teammates with this clown. Just man. Come on, man. Yeah, we ain't got to go into all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, man, listen. Congratulations again. We're going to support you anything that we can do. We Anytime you, you want to come through, anything you want us to put out yeah. on our show. Obviously, George is still coaching. I'm trying to get back into coaching into the high school ranks. We'll do anything to help you because we want that building to be back jump. We want it to rock. We like want it, you have to be rock. Like, you guys keep saying, you know, what you need from me. Anything I can do for you guys, you know I do it. So just we hey, already know your phone call away. You got that. Okay. I got that eight one five number. It's gonna turn into three one three. We already know it. You see, you see what I caught? I was like, is this still you? You know, yeah, 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 I got yeah, one five. Yeah, 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 you got a last in there, you know, We gonna see you get one of them more Obama for six miles. We gonna see. Three more. You're gonna be like that money. I'm gonna be the fifth dollar. You can't get the flip phone. Oh, damn. All right, man. Thank y'all for being in the State Champion Podcast again. Congratulations, Coach Mark Montgomery. Appreciate the love. Appreciate the love. Oh, oh, hold on. Can't tell me. What's this podcast? What's this podcast? You ain't let me finish. For the by the people, other no, go. Hear me. One love. Drop that intro. The champ is here. The champ is here. The champ is here.